Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Minus Forum UM700 Ryzen 7 powered mini PC. Now this little thing might look a little familiar to you because it's actually the same form factor as the DMAF5, which we took a look at on the channel about eight months ago and it was an awesome little performer, but it was powered by the Ryzen 5 3550H. And with the UM700, this is actually powered by a Ryzen 7 3750H. So at least on paper, the UM700 should outperform the DMAF5. So let's go ahead and get this out of the box and take a look at it. As you can see, I mean, it looks exactly like the DMAF5, except we have that super speed USB on the front there. Same layout, dual gigabit ethernet, same form factor. I mean, I personally love the way they've set these things up. Perfect size for a small form factor desktop PC. So along with the UM700 mini PC, we're also going to get an HDMI cable, a DisplayPort cable, our mounting bracket in case you want to put this on the back of your monitor, the bottom of your desk, or a wall, and our 65 watt power supply. So taking a look at the I.O. on the UM700 on the front here, we have a USB Type-C port. This will do display out. The yellow USB 3.1 port is Gen 1, the blue one is Gen 2, plus they've included a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, power button, and LED indicator. Not much going on over here on the right hand side, but when we move over to the left, we do have some ventilation. And around back, we have two more USB 3.1 ports, dual gigabit ethernet, full size display port, full size HDMI, and our power in. They do offer this in a couple different storage variants. The one I have here has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running in dual channel and a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD. But all of this is user replaceable and it's super easy to get in here. All you need to do is push down on the top. You can remove the top and access the RAM and the SSD. And this is a Kingston M.2 SSD with a heatsink, and we also have Kingston RAM. Two 8GB sticks running at 2400MHz. So as for the main specs of the UM700, for the CPU we have the AMD Ryzen 7 3750H. Four cores, eight threads, base clock 2.3, boost up to 4.0. Built-in Radeon Vega 10 graphics up to 1400MHz. Now that's the specs on the sheet. We're not sure if they're going to hit 14 in this unit. 16GB of DDR4 RAM running at 2400MHz, and this is in dual channel mode. 256GB Kingston SSD. 802.11ax Wi-Fi, so we do have Wi-Fi 6 pre-installed here, Bluetooth 5.1, and the whole unit's running Windows 10 Pro straight out of the box. So with all that out of the way, let's see how this mini PC performs. Okay, so here it is. I've got everything set up. We're running Windows 10 Pro. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 7 3750H. Uh, base clock 2.3 with a boost up to 4.0. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running in dual channel at 2400 megahertz and the built-in Radeon Vega 10 graphics. Now I have noticed something about this chip or the way they have this set up right now. It's limited to 25 watts and unfortunately even using something like Ryzen Master I cannot get it to go over. So we are limited on what this chip can do in the UM700 and I'd say one of the main limitations here is the GPU frequency. So if I head over here to CPU-Z, we'll go to graphics. Right here we have the core clock of the GPU. It's sitting at 200 megahertz right now. If I go to stress this out, this never goes to 1400 megahertz. And when gaming, it's around 800 to 900. And this is a limitation they've set up with the TDP. I've seen this in laptops with this same chip, and unfortunately it really does take away from the performance of this whole setup. I really wish that we could up this TDP either using a third party app like Ryzen Controller or from the BIOS, but unfortunately it's limited and, uh, and that's going to kind of cripple the performance that this Vega 10 can put out. But I still wanted to run through some testing, so first up we have Geekbench 5, single core, 983, multi, 3710. Not great, I mean this is definitely not Ryzen 4th generation performance, but for a mini PC it's still pretty decent. Next on the list I did run a quick benchmark on the included SSD, it's a Kingston 256GB. It's not NVMe speeds, but it's still doing a great job, you're not going to notice any lag with storage on this device with the included Kingston SSD. Time to take a look at some GPU benchmarks with 3 d Mark. First up we have Night Raid with a total score of 9768. Firestrike came in with a 2,931. And finally, Time Spy with a 958. Now, all of these scores would have been significantly increased if we could get that GPU to boost up to 1400 megahertz. But unfortunately, 800 to 900 is the range due to the TDP. 
All right, so moving over to some PC gaming. First up, we have Overwatch, 1080p, medium low mix, and I got an average of 63 FPS with this. If we take a look in the top left-hand corner, I do have Afterburner running. And right at the end of the very top line in Afterburner, you can see that that GP was not going up to 1400 megahertz. I mean, we max out at 900, but right here it's sitting steady around 857. So if we could get a little more out of this, we'd get a much better frame rate. But unfortunately, the way this is set up right now, it just won't allow it to clock all the way up. And as you can see here with Fortnite, it's doing the same exact thing, right at 857. 1080p, low settings, 70% resolution scale. I believe that we could go up to 100% resolution scale with this if that GPU would clock to 1400. Next up, we have Genshin Impact, 1080p, medium low settings, and even with that GPU clocking in lower than it really should, it's still got good performance here with this one. Rocket League, 1080p, medium settings. I knew this game was gonna run pretty well. I've tested this on lower end chipsets and it works out just fine. I got an average of 78 FPS with this one. Here's Forza Horizon 4. I did try this at low settings, 1080p, but it just went and cut 60, so I did have to drop that resolution down to 1600 by 900. But with a low preset here, I got an average of 65 FPS. Going into GTA 5, I was really hoping that we'd get better performance than we're seeing here. And just like Forza Horizon 4, I did have to drop this down to 1600 by 900. Here's Doom Eternal, 720p, low with dynamic scaling on. And if we take a look up at the metrics in the top right hand corner, you can see that that scale goes as low as 50%. So it definitely degrades the image fidelity, but if you do want to run this over 60, this is just how it has to be set up on this machine. And the final game I tested here was Skyrim Special Edition, 1080p, low settings, and I only got an average of 43 FPS. So having that GPU not clock up as high as it really should definitely dampens the gaming performance of this little machine. So when I test these little machines, I always like to test power consumption. This is total power draw from the wall using a kilowatt meter. At idle, 9.6 watts. 4K video playback, 15.4. And when gaming at 1080p, I could only get this to pull a maximum of 33.7 watts. I also went through and did a stress test, maxing out all four cores, eight threads, and the GPU. And this is the exact same wattage that we pulled in that extreme test. So 33.7 from the wall is the maximum this thing's going to do. So in the end, the UM700 does perform pretty well for its form factor, but we could get a lot more out of it if they would unlock that TDP in the BIOS or even allow us to use Ryzen Master to get that TDP up. It's really being held back by that GPU not clocking all the way up, and I've actually reached out to many forums about this. Hopefully they come up with a fix for this. And if and when they do, I will retest some of these games because I know that we can get a lot more out of this little machine if we could get that GPU to clock all the way up.
Now, when it comes down to it, Menace Forums already offers a superior machine over this. The X400 it has the fourth generation Ryzen APUs. You can get the 4650 or the 4750. And in my opinion, that's definitely going to be a much better choice than this. I've actually done a couple videos on the X400 with the 4650, and it's a great little performing machine. It does come in at a bit of a larger form factor than the UM700 and pulls a little more power. But in terms of raw CPU and GPU power, it definitely outperforms the UM700. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I had a couple viewers asking me to test this out, so I figured I'd go ahead and pick it up. And initially, I had really high hopes for it until I learned about that TDP issue. So if they do issue a BIOS update and it fixes the performance, I will revisit this. But if I had to choose between the UM700 or the X400, personally, I would choose the X400. So if you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the UM700, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. And like always... Thanks for watching.